Hey guys, Henning from Flip Normals here. And in today's tutorial, we are going to check out a new tool in Maya called Sweep Mesh. Sweep Mesh is an incredible new tool which makes modeling with curves much, much easier. You can find this under Create and Sweep Mesh. And before we get properly into the video, I just want to let you know that if you are interested in learning more about Maya, we have a really solid 12 hour course where we go through essentially every single feature you need to know in Maya from modeling, rendering, retopology, UVs using XGen, and finally creating this project here entirely within Maya using Arnold procedural shaders and proper subdivision surface modeling and some XGen at the end. So if you're interested in learning Maya, please check out this course link in the description. Now we are going to explore this tool by showing you a few different things we can model with it instead of just going through every single feature of it. So we are going to be starting off with creating an EP curve. Now you can create any kind of curve that really doesn't matter as long as it's a curve. We're going to be going to the front view. Then we're going to just going to be creating an EP curve just real quick. Then we will go back to the perspective view. And there we go. So the way we use sweep mesh is that first we have to select the curve we want to use then we go to create and sweep mesh and you can see there's nice and green like this if you have the uh, what's new feature and highlight what's new so create and sweep mesh and now you can see that this creates some kind of tube now the first thing i prefer to do is i prefer to shift right mouse button on this soft and harden and harden mesh just so i can see the polygons a little bit better like so then if we go to the outliner, you can also see that we have a new mesh called sweep one here. Now this is going to be named differently if you have multiple sweep meshes. Then if we go into the attribute editor, you can see we have a node here called sweep mesh creator. This is the one we're going to be using most of the time when it comes to sweep mesh. So this is pretty easy to use. You can see here that we have the different profiles, which is going to be poly. We have rectangle, we have line, arc, wave, and then we have custom, which we'll explore a little bit later on. The one I use by far the most is a polygon, and then later on it's uh, is a rectangle. Poly allows you to have a um, perfectly nice circle like this, or you can change it to a star, we can change this up like so. Maybe if you want to make toothpaste, this would be a fantastic way of doing it. Or you can just set this back to a circle and you can change the segments up and down. What's cool about this is that the curve is still live. So if you now select the curve, right mouse button, control vertex, and you select one of these points, you're gonna see that you can still edit this curve. So you can still move this around to your heart's content, which is fantastic. A little tip as well, this is something I only learned recently actually. If you go to curves and then you go to lock length, now you can go in one of the CV points and now the length of the curve has been, has been locked. So if you drag on a point now, you see that you're actually not moving the point itself. You are dragging the entire curve. You can still see the starting point here is also locked. So if you now were to drag this, you can just drag this around like so, which is really cool. Just a nice little curve tip for you. Now go back to the curve and then you can just go back to curve and unlock length. So now you can just start to go in here again and you can start to move this around to your heart's content. So what's cool about this is that you have so much control over what's going on. You can um, go in here, you can just scale of it. You can change the rotate profile, which doesn't do a whole lot right now, but we'll get to that later on. You can add twist to it and you can add taper to it as well. The most relevant here would be the taper because this is one you can see more directly when we're dealing with um, uh, just a straight tube like this. So taper is really cool because it allows you to just taper this entire thing down. So let's say you want to make some kind of tail or anything like this, you can really do that. We can also go in and we can set the taper curve to something very specific. So if you want to have the beginning of this taper down instead, or if you want the end of it to go down, you can do that. Or we can go in and we can start to add taper points at very specific areas like this. So this means that you can really control the exact mesh you are creating from this. You also have the interpolation. This is a more a fancy way of saying uh, the poly count. Now, by default, this is gonna be set to precision, which simply means lower number means lower poly count and higher number means higher poly count. This is by far the easiest one to use simply because it's a slider. You can also enable a button here called optimize. Optimize is fantastic because it will look at the shape and it will give you a more optimized version of this. It will basically preserve the silhouette of the model and um, optimize the poly count based on that. 
Then we have UVs as well. If you make sure this is just set to default and we go to UV, you can now see that this has unfolded our model beautifully. So you never have to do any of the, these weird tricks for getting UVs to look right on tubes like this. So let's delete this guy, both of them, select them both, hit delete, then we'll go to the right view and then we will make another curve here. This we have a fresh starting point. So then we'll do the same thing again. We will go to create, then we'll enable sweep mesh or make it a sweep mesh. And now what I want to show you is the rectangle. This is really cool because this allows you to really sharpen off the edges and create really cool results. So we can now just enable wireframe or we can hit Alt and five as a little tip as well. You can see down here as well, all the hotkeys. And so what this allows us to do is you can change the, uh, the width, the height, you can change your corner radius. So you can really create some cool stuff here. Let's say you need some kind of railing for some kind of road or really anything architectural. You can change the, uh, the radius of it as well and you can change segments of it as well. So you have a lot of freedom here. Already now you can see that we created quite an intricate shape just from this. Then we have another feature which we haven't talked about. Then we have another feature which is fantastic as well. It's called distribution. So enable distribute. This is just the second, uh, the second drop down here. And this allows you to duplicate the shape you just made. Now what you can see immediately happens is that this scales down to 50%. So if you want this to stay the same in terms of size, just go back here and change this back to one. We are just gonna be leaving this to 0 0.5. So what this is doing is it duplicates the mesh around the curve around the curve we had in the center. So this is cool because we can now change the amount. We can change the scale like we did here. You can change the rotation of them and you can change the coverage. Coverage looks like this. So it will just rotate them around like so. So this is really powerful because this means you can create very complicated shapes really fast and non-destructively as well. So for instance, if you now go back here and change the, uh, the width or the height or the radius or anything on that, this now updates on all of them. But the coolest thing for me by far here is the fact that you still have all the options like the twist and tapering. So already now we've created a cool twist. This shape here would honestly take quite a lot of time to make without this, without this feature, without sweep mesh. So you can create a twist here. Something to be aware of as well is that while this is at two now, this is a max, you can just input whatever number you want to. So now the 10 becomes the middle number and now you can just change this up to whatever you want to. So this just means you have a much bigger range. So you can always change this number to be a higher or lower, depending on it, you're not locked to the top. And then we can also enable a taper as well. So now we can just taper this in. And now you can see we're creating a really complicated shape with just a few clicks here, just creating a random curve. You can also, of course, go in here and we can set the taper back to uh, one. And then you can, of course, go in and you can change the specifics of the, the taper as well. And we can, of course, increase the poly count as well. So now we have a really cool organic shape within essentially a few minutes. Next up, we will look at how we can use a custom mesh on a curve. So for this, we'll go to the front view. I'll just enable the grid. I have a custom hotkey for that, just for Shift and G, which makes that a lot easier. Then we're gonna to go to CV Curve Tool, and we're just gonna be setting the curve degree to one. This just means we get perfectly straight curves. So I'll hold down the X key, and I will just make a few points like this. So it snaps to the grid. And then I will select the curve, Shift right mouse button, and open and close curves. And now we have a perfectly closed curve. So what we'll do with this is we will create a, um, a custom mesh, which we can then use to make a really nice image, uh, picture frame here. So select the whole thing, go to create, sweep mesh. And now you can see that by default, you get a mesh around the curve, which is cool, but we want to use a custom mesh for this. That's it. You can also really create cool stuff with this as well, just purely procedurally using only the rectangle. So I highly recommend experimenting with that. But what we'll do now is we will create a cube, shift right mouse button, cube, and we'll just move this guy over here. Then I'll select the um, I'll select the polygon, the first polygon. I'll use a custom hotkey for inverting the selection. You can also just hold down shift and uh, drag on top to invert the selection, and then we'll delete all of this. What's cool about this is that 
this is interactive. So once we select the, the mesh to be used, whatever, whenever we change the mesh, it's gonna affect the result here as well. So go back to the object, to, to the sweep one, then we go to mesh, uh, sweep mesh creator, then we do custom. Now here you can either select a curve, a poly object or a poly face or poly edge. Now we are gonna be selecting a poly object. Now simply we select the poly object we want. Uh, what's important now is that we hit okay. Cause if you deselect it now, we select something else, it's gonna be using that mesh. So hit okay. And I'm deliberately using only one face here. Then I'm just centering the pivot and then we can start to model this up. So you can see now, if we start to just change the model, this changes drastically the result here. You can also go into the sweep mesh creator and you can change the scale as well. So for instance, if uh, you don't want this exact size, you can always go in and make this bigger or smaller. So what we can do now is we can, for instance, go in and we can bevel these corners. So we can just chamfer them like this, control and B while the corners are selected. Select the two corners and hit the delete key. Then we'll select this mesh and just shift right mouse button and soften harden and harden edges. Just so you can see a little bit better what's going on. Then we can extrude this down a little bit and we can extrude it in. And then we can uh, make some cuts here. So I just want to have a simple cut like this. And now you can see we're getting a more complicated shape as by the minute basically. I'll just split the viewport in two so I can have one view for the front view and one view for perspective. So go to panels, layouts, and two panes side by side. And then we can make this be the front view and then we can just evaluate this in perspective view. Then we'll use the multi-cut tool, which you can access just object mode and shift right mouse button and multi-cut. And just hold down the, um, the shift key to do angle snaps like this. And then we can uh, just do some nice little cuts in here. Now. We are not creating the cleanest topology, but honestly, that doesn't matter one bit because we are not creating, we're not aiming for a clean topology. We are aiming for a cool shape here and the topology here will be fine. So now we can just create a cool shape here. Now, whatever we're doing here, it doesn't matter exactly. What matters is just that you can see that you can create a, use a custom mesh to create a cool frame. You can also create this with curves as well. That's totally fine. So if you want to make this mesh with curves, that's awesome. I just personally prefer to model with polygons. So now we can go in here, you can also rotate it. So now you're getting a whole different result just by rotating this. And you can scale this in, you can scale this in different ways as well to really change the result. Now, if you want to create this shape here with curves, that's easy to do as well. We're gonna be using the CV curve tool and then we can just uh, snap this to the grid. Just by, hold, just by holding on the X key. So you can create some really cool sci-fi looking shapes like this. Open, close curve. And we can just move this if we want to move this like so. And then we can instead, we can just scale this down. And then instead of using the mesh here, we can use a curve. So sweep mesh creator, custom, uh, type and set this to curve object. And there we go. And now you can see that we have the shape from this guy here as well. And you can just rotate this, this guy around as well. And now you are creating this, uh, the shape from this using a curved object, which is incredibly cool. It means you can create something like this procedurally and really fast. The only thing we have with this object here is we have two curves, that's it. We have a curve here and we have a curve here. And based on this, we can change anything. So you can change the original curve or you can change this guy and you can now create shapes really fast. So let's just delete these things. And then the last example is gonna be a uh, more of a practical one as well. We are gonna be creating a staircase. Now, I will assume that you know how to create some of these curves. These are very simple. We have one curve in the center like this, which was made simply by doing this. Hold on, on the X key with the CV curve tool, X, and then just snapping this to the grid. So I just made a curve which goes like this. And then we have a curve, which is just a straight line from here, which is duplicated. So there are two things I want to show you now. The first one is how we can create a base staircase from uh, this mesh, and then how we can use sweep mesh to affect two of uh, two meshes or two curves at the same time. So the first thing we'll do is we will select the middle one. Then we'll go to create 
and we'll go to Sweep Mesh. And then we can set the uh, this to rectangle, and then we can change the width here to something much higher. Remember, this is not the cap. This is more like the suggested cap. So we set this to something like 10, and you can see how this works. So this is a pretty, pretty good starting point. We can change the height as well. So if you want this to be a narrow staircase, you can do that. You can change the depth if you want this to go uh, more outward like this. Also select it, shift right mouse button and harden edges. So you have a lot of power directly in this. And of course, if you were to change the curve, you would indeed change the entire shape like so. And you can see it keeps adding spans to this. So whatever we're moving this, it will keep adding spans at the same density as the other places. So let's actually just leave it like so. We can actually do the same with the bottom one as well. So now we have a starting platform and an end platform. So, you know, you can just experiment with this. Also setting as well, I forgot to mention, is cap. This will basically cap the ends, pretty self-explanatory. So then we can change the amount of segments as well to make this shape a little bit more interesting. And a little tip as well is um, right now it's actually a little hard to see the mesh simply because there's so much green stuff here. But if you deselect it now, well, and we disable the wireframe, still, now you actually can't access the sweep mesh because now you deselected it. But if you select it and you go to show and all the way in the bottom here, we have selection highlighting. Now, if we just dock this over, what this allows us to do is it allows us to select a mesh without the, um, the selection highlighting. So this means you can now see what's going on. It's really important to be able to do this because now you can change the radius of this, you can change the segments, you can change the depth, and you can actually see what's going on without having to worry about um, uh, not being able to see your mesh. A little tip as well is we selected the mesh before and we went to soft and harden and we used harden. You can see here now we have some softer edges. So what you can do is soft and harden and then soft and harden. And now you see that these here become much softer. So now we have a pretty cool result here. Now what we need to do is we need to select these two and then with both selected, we go to create and then we go to sweep mesh. And then you can see that Whatever we do in one is going to affect the other one. What's, ha what's technically happening here is we have one sweep mesh, which is affecting two output meshes. So now on the rectangle, we can make an interesting shape here as well. We can set this to be corner depth, select both of them, shift right mouse button, and then soft and harden. And now you can change the width of them and you can change the height and you can change the overall scale as well of this whole thing. What's cool now is that we can also go under distribution, make a couple of them, and then we can add a twist to this as well. So now this is going to be this really wacky handrail. Then what we can do, we can take the, the rails here as well. We can just scale the group in so this fits a little bit better with what we have. And then we can go back into this sweep. It doesn't really matter if you select both because this is this is the same node for both of them. So if we select this, you see it's called um, Sweep Mesh Creator 2. So now we can create change the amount of instances. We can change the, um, the tapering like so. And then we can change the scale of them as well and the overall coverage. So if you want something like this, really easily make some really interesting shapes using sweep mesh. So again, the cool thing about sweep mesh is that this entire thing is procedural. If you need to change anything here, you can do that so easily. So if you have client changes or anything like that, you can make really cool environments really fast. Some other examples of where you can use sweep mesh would be if you need to create some kind of road system, if you need to create um, some, um, some game here, then you can easily create curves like this and you can create a uh, sweep mesh and you can set this here to be a uh, wave or just an arc like this. And now you can use this to, to create like some actual, some actual game here or, you know, whatever it is you want to, you can just use this as a starting point for all sorts of cool things. So yeah, that's sweep mesh for you. It's an incredibly powerful and very simple to use tool. It allows you to work with curves in, a really effective and procedural way and you're never going to go back to the good old uh, extrude a cylinder along a curve like that. So if you want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.